Okay, so in this next lesson, we're going to talk about what is ASP.NET MVC. So what is ASP.NET MVC? ASP.NET MVC is a programming model that breaks down the development model into three components. The first component is the model, the second component is the view, and the third component is the controller. This design pattern has been around for quite some time. It was introduced for Microsoft.NET development in 2009. It's really an alternative to web form development, and it's a much simpler design pattern than the web form development pattern. It's a lightweight, simple platform, and it's designed into these three components, the model, the view, and the controller, and it's designed such that, it, that it's a much more logical separation of concerns for the code. If you've done a lot of web form development, web forms can tend to grow to be pretty complex if you put a lot of logic in the code behind and it becomes difficult to organize in a large program. So a little bit about the history of ASP.NET MVC. It was first released in 2009 and quickly a second version of MVC followed in 2010. There have since been subsequent versions and updates to MVC and the current release is ASP.NET MVC 5. And in a subsequent slide, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the newer features of ASP.NET MVC 5 and where you can get some more current information on that particular version. So what is the model view controller architecture? So MVC is really a design pattern and it's a way to organize code. And like I mentioned earlier, this design pattern has been around for quite some time and it's implemented in a number of different languages. So it's really a language agnostic kind of design pattern. What it does is it delegates responsibility so that it's a repeatable pattern. The three pieces of it, the first piece, the model structures the data for the application and it typically interacts with the database. So all database and data oriented kinds of uh, applications and, and um, uh, methods are located within the model. The view presents the data to the user and is, and is really the presentation layer for the application. So the view will pull data from the model and display it to the user. So all the presentation layer components are isolated within the view. What's nice about that is if you follow this pattern, then you can have multiple views with having the same model and render it for different things. This can be very handy in implementing things like reports or maybe rendering data for a PDF instead of for HTML or some different type of device. So you could have one particular model and multiple views manipulating that uh, that would specify for the different devices. The last piece is the controller. And the controller handles the user interaction for the application and really acts like the traffic cop uh, for the application. So all the routing, uh, menus, transforming data before it goes into the view, uh, all of those interactions are done by the controller. So I should note that there's nothing particular that enforces that you um, have these components in the, in the various different pieces. They're done really by convention and you learn from experience how to do this. So um, the, the danger is not to get too much logic into the view or have too few or not enough logic in the model. So you really want to have the concern where the view is simply updating the, the user interface, the model is interacting with the data, and the controller is handling all those interactions between the two. So another significant component of ASP.NET MVC uh, in the Microsoft version of this is Razor. So what is Razor? Razor is a markup syntax for adding server-based code to web pages. So in Razor you can have a syntax that will um, integrate both C Sharp and Visual, Visual Basic code and then facilitate rendering HTML. So it has the, the power of a traditional markup language, but it's very easy to learn and, and it's even easier to use. Razor is a server-side markup syntax, much like ASP and PHP, but again, uh, it's designed so that it has a very simple uh, implementation. Uh, mentioned earlier that it supports both C Sharp and Visual Basic programming languages, so it would support any of the .NET programming languages. And so if we look at ASP.NET MVC, well, what are the particular advantages of ASP.NET MVC? Why is it such a good framework to use? 
Well, for one, it's a lighter weight framework than web forms. It's a very lightweight, simple environment. Uh, it's very quick. It does not have a lot of overhead to it. And I think it also allows for a tighter level of control of how HTML is rendered, how HTML is rendered in the browser. Um, you get a really a, a, an easy way to uh, override some of the defaults of the framework, and you have a very fine la layer of control of how HTML is rendered to the browser. And I'll speak about this in the next slide, but it's also maybe one of its l uh, limitations as well. Because of that, I think if you program an ASP.NET MVC, you really require a little bit higher understanding of how to integrate JavaScript. So because of the way that uh, ASP.NET MVC is, is highly kind of decoupled and there's a good uh, separation of concerns, it's a highly testable framework because of that construction. So you can easily plug in unit tests into MVC and really automate testing around it and makes it a, a very good platform for automated testing. Um, again, we talked about it enables a good separation of concerns for the code. It's very easy to follow. If you have multiple programmers working on a large project, if they really follow the guidelines, it becomes much easier to maintain for a team of people. It's easy to find code. It's easy to trace through the code because of the repeatable design pattern. And the last advantage of ASP.NET MVC is it's a very good, it has very good integration with JavaScript. So, and there are a number of libraries out uh, that can be used uh, readily with ASP.NET MVC, as well as some good examples out on the net of how to do that. So, what are the limitations of MVC? It's not really a visual development environment like web forms. There isn't a a GUI painter or a screen painter per se. Um, it requires probably a more detailed uh, understanding of uh, HTML and JavaScript. So, so I think if you're a programmer, it's good to have a solid basis of JavaScript before you uh, um, delve into a large project. Um, there's not a huge amount of pre-built tools for ASP.NET MVC. Uh, however, there are a number of JavaScript components out uh, on the web. And like I say, there, there's also some, some good examples of that as well. And what maybe one last uh, disadvantage or limitation of ASP.NET MVC is if you're looking to convert a number of existing web form programs, there's no automatic conversion or upgrade. Uh, you would really have to rewrite the code. So if you're looking to do that, it's a fairly large investment uh, to take a, a project like that uh, under, under hand. So what is new for ASP.NET MVC? ASP.NET MVC 5 is the latest release, and I've included the, the link for this on the slide. There's new project creation options for ASP.NET MVC. There's new options for authentication um, that make integrating with things like Active Directory a, a lot easier. There's additional options for scaffolding. So we did a scaffolding example earlier in this class. And there's additional options around scaffolding that make it even quicker now to uh, integrate new user interface components. MVC projects now include Bootstrap for a clean, responsive UI. So the responsive UI makes it uh, projects that are able to render on a mobile device uh, much easier. And there's also additional options for authentication for external sources such as Facebook, Google, and OAuth. So a lot more options around authentication and make it easier to plug in and I've included the link where you can find the latest features of MVC5. The last major thing under development is ASP.NET Core and that's under development right now. It's going through a cycle of beta releases and it's really Microsoft's first entry into the cross-platform development environment. So uh, delivering ASP.NET code on a Mac or on a Linux box is, is now uh, on the horizon and you can download those tools. If you're looking for more information about ASP.NET MVC, I've included some links here. The first one is for the main website, uh, ASP.NET uh, slash MVC. Channel 9 is a series of uh, videos that are put out by Microsoft, and there's a lot of good information in there. And then the last one is from uh, Scott Hanselman, who uh, has a number of really good uh, blog posts about ASP.NET MVC. So that's really it. Um, that's the remain the uh, conclusion of this lecture on ASP.NET MVC in a lot more detail. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lesson.